Okay, let's see something good. Uh, this is the star Dube in the Big Dipper. It's one of the two pointer stars, uh, the two stars that point toward Polaris, and Dube is the closer star to Polaris. And I'm just using it to get focused right now. As you can see, uh, Dube is a wide uh, double star, spaced by about a tenth of a degree, and easy to see in binoculars or a small telescope. All right, I'm just about ready to go here. Let's go over to our first deep sky object. Okay, and our first target tonight is uh, the Owl Nebula, M97, in Ursa Major. It is just a couple of degrees southwest of the other pointer star, Merrick, and it's just going to come into view now. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Um, so the Owl Nebula is a planetary nebula. That's why it's a nice green color. It's um, generated by uh, an old dying star throwing off its outer layers of uh, gas and dust. The sun will do this one day. And uh, the star ignites uh, oxygen uh, ions in the cloud of gas that it, it ejects. And these ions glow a uh, a green or a greeny blue color, which is a characteristic uh, a color of these nebula. So this is about a ninth magnitude object. It's quite tricky to see with a four inch telescope visually. That's what I'm using right now, a four inch scope, but uh, this camera really uh, improves the contrast and it's much more sensitive than the human eye. And I've got a UHC filter on here that pulls it out nicely too. And you can just, it's quite small here, I've got a short focal length, but you can just see the, uh, the, the two eyes, the owl-like shape embedded inside the nebula, which gives this uh, its name. It's also catalogued as M97. Okay, let's go off to our next target here. It is going to be the galaxy M51 the Whirlpool Galaxy. So it's just coming up here. Let me adjust uh, the contrast of the screen. There it is coming up. It's quite small again in this telescope with uh, such a short focal length. But you can see the Whirlpool shape. It's a beautiful face-on spiral galaxy and it's interacting with its nearest neighbor. So on the left side of the screen you see uh, the smaller galaxy, it is uh, NGC 5195, and together they're called, uh, usually referred to as the Whirlpool Galaxy. Um, it's about 15 million light years away, not terribly far by galactic standards, and um, the two galaxies uh, are interacting, as I said. In close-ups you can see actually uh, blue stars in the spiral arms and little clots of pink nebulae along the spiral of, uh, of M51 where new stars are being formed. So again with a 4 inch telescope uh, under these city skies that I'm in right now this is actually a pretty good view of this object. It's quite, uh, quite a nice one. It's um, located just under the, ha under the handle of the Big Dipper uh, over the border of, uh, into the constellation Canis Venetici. So you can check your star maps to, to find this one. Very lovely object. Okay, let's try uh, another galaxy. Uh, this is, it's, it's my favorite. I have to admit, this is uh, this is uh, NGC 4565 in the constellation Coma Berenice. It's a little further away from the Dipper, and uh, there it is. This is uh, sometimes called the Flying Saucer Galaxy, and you can see why. It's a it's an edge-on spiral galaxy, about um, 32 million light years away, I believe, and it this it looks much like the Milky Way would look. If, uh, if we could see the Milky Way edge on from, from outside the galaxy. Uh, this, is, this galaxy is about 125,000 light years across, about 25% larger than the Milky Way. Uh, but you can see hints of the dust lane here 
running across the middle of the galaxy. Quite, quite pretty and a very concentrated core. It's about magnitude 9.6. This is, uh, I wrote the, the very first article I wrote for One Minute Astronomer was about this galaxy. I figured if I couldn't write a good article about this galaxy, I couldn't write a good article about anything. And that was about four years ago. Okay, can you stand one more? Let's try a globular cluster. There are a few good ones out right now, and I'm going to go to M3, which again is in Canis Venetici, uh, just over the border from Bootes. It's about halfway between the star Arcturus and Cor Coroli, if you want to pull out a star map. Not terribly hard to find, and there it is now. A uh, lovely cluster. Really, it's one of the four, four or five brightest in the northern hemisphere. And uh, it's, you're looking at about half a million stars here. And it has, uh, M3 has about 200 known variable stars, which is the largest number of any globular cluster. The cluster is uh, fairly young for a globular. It's about 8 billion years old. Most globs are about 10 to 12 billion years old. And uh, this one is quite lovely. You can see the little arms of stars that shoot out in all directions. It looks like a like a squashed uh, spider. There's a particularly nice curved curved arm coming out the left side, or the right side rather, ending at a brighter star. So this is a very pretty globular cluster to have a look at. Again, it's kind of small. I've got a, a short focal ratio telescope here, but it gives you some idea of what this object looks like through a small telescope. So that brings this star tour to an end. I hope you've enjoyed it. Here's a look at uh, what we've seen tonight. A nice mix of objects in the northern spring sky. And uh, a look at uh, the equipment we used tonight. So I hope you've enjoyed it. This is Brian Ventrudo, publisher of One Minute Astronomer, uh, signing off and wishing you clear skies.